Today, I'd like to talk about an interesting use case for the new portable power stations that can output 240 volt split phase power. That's the same kind of power used in most residential homes in the United States. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you have a new 240 volt device and it's located in a room or a garage that only has 120 volt circuits. In the past, the only way to power this device would be to install a new 240 volt circuit in that room. With portable power stations like this Blue Eddy Apex 300, you now have another option. Today, I'm gonna to test that option out in three different ways. I'm gonna charge my EV using a 16 amp, 240 volt charge cord set. I'm gonna connect the charger to the Apex 300. And the first test is just gonna see how long it can run just off of the battery. The second test is how long it can run using the battery and supplementing the battery with 120 volt power from my garage. I don't think it'll double the amount of time it can charge the vehicle, but I think it could probably get about 50% more run time. The third test is the same as the second, but in addition to plugging in the 120 volt garage power, I'm also gonna connect some solar panels to the Blue Eddy Apex 300 and we're gonna see if that can extend the runtime almost indefinitely, as long as we've got sun shining outside. Let's get started and take a look. Before I continue, I just wanna note that what I'm about to test may have very limited use cases outside of short-term EV charging. Why? Because this setup can only output 16 amps. Most 240 volt appliances in the US are well over 16 amps. Notable exceptions may be some of the newer heat pump clothes dryers and mini split systems. With that in mind, I'll let you decide if you want to keep watching. Before we get started, I wanna make sure that the charge cord is set to 16 amps. That way the car and the cord set isn't pulling more power than the Blue Eddy can provide. To do that, I'm gonna plug in the cord set I'm going to make sure the power station is set to 240 volts. And then I'm going to turn on AC power. Okay, you can see this cord set is set to 16 amps. In this particular one, you can cycle through all the way up to 40 amps. But based on what the Blue Eddy can provide, I'm going to set it to 16 amps. You can see here that we're starting with 100% state of charge in the battery. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the car and see how long the screen says it can provide power at 240 volts. All right, I heard the car beep. That says that charging has initiated. We can see on the Blue Eddy screen that it's outputting 3,870 so watts. The cord set says charging at 15.4, 15.6 amps. And based on this entire configuration, the Blue Eddy says it can provide power to charge the car for 0.7 hours.
All right, now let's get set up for our second test. I've got the cord for the Blue Eddy plugged into the wall. Now I'm going to plug the cord into the Blue Eddy. Shut off AC power just to be safe. We're going to plug 120 volts into the side. At this point, we're going to recharge the Blue Eddy back to 100%. Once that's finished charging, I'm going to come back and I'm going to repeat the test, but this time with 120 volts connected and the battery power. We've got the power station charged back up to 100%. The power station is plugged in to 120 volts coming from the garage. So let's repeat the test and see how long the screen says we can charge the electric car at 240 volts using the battery power plus 120 volts from the house. This is a good time to note that I went ahead and set the AC input maximum to 12 amps on the Blue Eddy. I don't want to pull more than 2 amps from the house just to be safe. We are in a 15 amp breaker, but in this case, 12 amps is sufficient for our test. And we should see a longer run time than the 0.7 hours that we saw when we were running off the battery alone. Let's plug it in and see what we get. Turn the AC on. Plug it in. All right. Now it shows that the car is charging at 35, 3600 watts. And the power station is pulling about 1300 watts from the house. So with the battery and 120 volt AC power from the house, the power station says it can charge the car at 240 volts for 1.2 hours. So that's a half an hour better than when we were running off the battery alone. I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and see how it affects the uh, time remaining and the state of charge percentage. And I'll come back and take a look in a second. In the meantime, I will pull up some uh, pictures from the app to show how the power is coming in and coming out. So the split phase power coming out of the Blue Eddy and the um, 120 volt input coming into the Blue Eddy, uh, all that should show up in the app. So I'll pull that up right now. Okay, our second test has been running for a little over 15 minutes now. The state of charge has dropped down to about 80%, uh, now 79%. So we've lost about 21% state of charge. And the runtime meter is now showing that it'll run for another 0.9 hours. If you recall, it said that we would start off at about 1.2 hours. And now we're somewhere around 15, 20 minutes of runtime and it's showing 0.9 hours remaining. So that's about in line with uh, what you'd expect. 1.2 minus 0.9 would be 0.3 hours, and that's about 20 minutes. So it seems to be running as expected. The display seems to be showing, you know, the right approximation of how long it will run for. So now I'm going to get ready for the second test. I'm going to unplug the car, and I'm going to let the Blue Eddy recharge. And while that's happening, I'm going to get the solar panels ready and um, that will be our third test. Okay, let's take a look at how I've connected the solar panels for this third test. In my yard, I have a fixed array on the right-hand side here of three 310 watt panels. So that's about 930 watts of solar. I have a fourth matching panel that I've set up on the left-hand side here. So for this test, I've actually set up two strings of two panels each. So the left two panels are about 620 watts, and the right two panels combined are about 620 watts. And these panels are connected together in parallel. So I've got two strings of parallel panels 
and each of those two strings is connected into one of the two solar inputs on the Apex 300. Okay, getting through this third test has been a bit tricky, especially setting it up so I can show you on the camera what's going on. So first, let me walk you through how everything's connected. On the right-hand side of the power station, 120 volts of power is coming in from the garage. On the left-hand side of the power station, I have about 1,200 watts of solar power coming in, two strings of 600 watts each. And that makes a total of approximately 1,300 watts from the house and up to 1,200 watts from the solar panels or 2,500 watts potentially coming in in total. However, as the power station approaches 100% state of charge, it stops drawing power from the house and is just using a little bit of power from the solar panels. To make things even more complicated, it's been really cloudy today. And every time I go to film this, the clouds are blocking the sun and the solar power drops down really low. So uh, right now the sun is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the car for this third test. And we're gonna see how much runtime that we get uh, out of the power station uh, on the 240 volt output. All right, the beep says the car is charging. And the power station's ramping up. All right, we've got about 3,600 watts or so of power uh, going to charge the car. We're showing about four to 500 watts of power coming in from the solar panels. And uh, just under 1,300 watts of power coming in from the household AC. So it's gonna fluctuate a bit, but right now the Bluetti is showing that in this configuration, it can run the 240 volt cord set for the car for about 1.6 hours. Now it's showing about 1.7 hours. So the more solar we get, the longer it's projecting that this can run um, in this configuration. That shows that this definitely works. If you've got sun coming in and you've got uh, some 120 volt power from your home, you can really increase the runtime of this station in 240 volt mode without even having to uh, add additional um, capacity to it. It can do it on its own. So now we're showing uh, about 1.8 hours of runtime with about 950 watts of solar coming in and about 1300 watts of uh, household AC power coming in. Let's summarize what we've seen in all three tests. In the first test, with the battery alone, we saw 0.7 hours of runtime. In the second test, with the battery and 120 volts from the house, we saw 1.2 hours of runtime. And in this third test, with the battery, 120 volts, and about 950 watts of solar, we saw 1.8 hours of runtime. As a proof of concept, the additional runtimes that we see here show that this is clearly working. If you want more runtime, you have some options, including adding more solar panels, adding expansion batteries, or reducing the amp setting on your device, if that's possible. If you wanted to run a larger device, say something that required more than 16 amps, you would have to look at additional Apex 300s and a combiner hub, or a different power station altogether. However, both of those options will likely be even more expensive than just installing a 240 volt circuit where you need it. Also, if you are considering a different brand of power station, be sure that it allows you to output 240 volts while connected to 120 volts. Some of them do not allow this. If you're still with me at this point in the video, I'd like to go off on a related tangent for a moment. My experiment of running a 240 volt device off a 120 volt circuit is actually quite in line with the developing market of similar technology. There are appliances coming out, 
such as the Impulse Cooktop or Copper Home Electric Range that also use a built-in battery to supplement 120 volts and then run as a 240 volt device. Initial pricing for both brands at around $6,000 seems pretty consistent with the cost of purchasing two 16 amp power stations and a new appliance. Since these Impulse and Copper Home units have built-in batteries, I would imagine that they are quite heavy. I'm definitely curious to watch this space develop. I'm also interested in hearing how you would use a 240 volt power station that is supplemented with 120 volts. What use cases have you been thinking about? Let us know in the comment section. Well, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this topic, then you may want to take a look at this next video. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if that's your thing. As always, thanks for watching.